I'm so happy to have some time to study from God's Word with you again today. My name is Chris Swinford, and I'm the preaching minister here at the Faith Village Church of Christ in Wichita Falls, Texas. It's always a blessing to be able to study God's Word, and I really look forward to the time of study we have together today. I look forward to the time when we can meet again here at the building for all of our Bible classes and look forward to that time when everything is sort of back to normal. But it's not normal times. But this does give us a great opportunity, an opportunity to study from home, to review things through the week, even study things from preachers from other congregations. And I hope you're taking advantage of this opportunity to study. We've been studying about the disciples of Jesus Christ, those early disciples, especially those that would be called apostles, and about how they were called to follow Jesus. He would to ask them to follow him and said, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And we're going to talk about those early men who accepted that challenge. And we're going to talk about a lot of those who followed Jesus in those early days. And we're going to talk about how the challenge hasn't changed. We too are called to follow after Jesus. He also wants to make us fishers of men, evangelists of those around us. We began our study last week by looking at Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 11. It was a very interesting story that started with a very frustrating night. Peter and Andrew and James and John had gone out fishing on the Sea of Galilee. And they had fished all night long and they caught nothing. Hours and hours of work and they caught nothing. They came back to shore and instead of worrying about selling their fish and getting their fish to their homes for their families, they instantly began mending their own nets. They laid them out in the sand to dry and they began to tie them back together and mend the places that were broken. And as they were mending their nets, Jesus came by. Jesus was already being followed by a great number of people. And as Jesus came by that day, there were so many people that he couldn't just stand right among them and teach or they wouldn't all hear. So he asked Peter and Andrew if he could borrow their boat. And he went out just a little way from the shore and turned around and spoke to this great gathering of people surrounding him. Well, as they mended their nets, Peter and Andrew and James and John would have heard as well the great things that Jesus was saying. They would have already probably been hearing about the great things he had done all over their area. I'm sure the stories were swirling through the streets of their cities. Peter and Andrew worked. Jesus taught, and as he finished, he brought the boat back to shore, came to see Peter and Andrew, and he said, why don't you take your nets, your boats, go back out, lower those nets, and catch fish. I'm sure that Peter would have wanted to tell him, that's a bad plan. That's not the way this works. You see, during the heat of the day, the fish go down to the very depth of the sea among the rocks. And there it's impossible to catch them with your nets. But Jesus asked him. And Peter looked at him and said, Because you have asked, or at your bidding, we will go and let down our nets. So Peter and Andrew get in their boats with their nets that they have just washed. When they come in, they'll have to wash and clean them all over again. But they go back out, and they lower those nets. And as they begin to pull up the nets, they realize... They've caught a great load of fish. In fact, it's so much that it threatens to sink their boat. So they call out to James and to John, their fishing partners, and they come to their side, to their aid in their boat, and they begin to load the fish into both boats. It was an incredible haul of fish. But what's on at least Peter's mind at this point isn't fish. It's the one that asked them to go out and lower their nets. Peter, Andrew, James, and John go back to the shore. Peter jumps out, splashes up in the water, falls at the feet of Jesus, puts his arms around his legs, 
and says, depart from me because I'm so sinful. Now, Peter obviously doesn't want Jesus to leave. He's grabbing onto his legs. But he's saying something that's very important to the Hebrew people. Whenever you said, depart from me because I'm not worthy, it meant I realize how important you are. I realize how special you are. I realize that you are more than I am. Peter said, I don't know everything, but I do know this. You're more, and I'm less, and I want to be with you. Peter and Andrew, James and John gather around him, and Jesus gives them a command. He says, follow me. He didn't say, if you would like to, maybe you could follow me. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Instead of fishing for fish in the Sea of Galilee, we will walk through the streets of this land. We'll walk into the marketplaces. We'll walk all across this land. Anywhere there are people, we'll be there. And we will try to save their souls. We will try to catch them for God. We'll try to catch them and place them in the kingdom. Jesus called them not to be fishermen, but to be evangelists. And they followed. We saw from this three things. First of all, whatever Jesus tells us to do, we need to say, but at your bidding. Because you've asked me, that's exactly what I'll do. The second thing we saw is that we need to not just obey, but we need to realize who Jesus is. We need to fall at the feet of Jesus, grab onto his legs and say, I realize that I'm not worth much. I realize that you are worth everything as Peter did that day. And then third, we need to be willing to leave everything and follow Jesus. And we need to be willing to do whatever we can do to seek out and to save the lost around us in this world. Well, after this, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they left their family, the boats, the fish, the nets, all of that, and began to follow after Jesus. He was the rabbi. He was the teacher. They were the disciples. They were the students. They were called to follow closely to this teacher, to help him, to learn the things that he had to teach, and someday go on to teach those things to others. Rabbis walking through the streets with students was a common thing in their time. They would usually get their students from schools get those who were the most intellectually wise among them. Where did Jesus get his first disciples, first students? Well, he got those fishermen from the sea. And now those four fishermen are following along with him. He's walking back into the city, this large group of people still following him, and he continues to heal others. He continues to teach lessons. He continues to cast out demons. He continues to do the amazing things that only Jesus could do. And as they're walking along, they hear him say one more time those words that changed their lives. We hear him say, follow me. Come, go with me, learn from me. They hear though that command, that challenge being given one more time. Let's read together in Matthew chapter 9, verse number 9 where Jesus calls Matthew. It says, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth and he said to him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Tax booths were most generally inside the Agora. Agora is the Greek word for markets. They were the place where everyone gathered and where all business transactions were usually done. Matthew would have been there gathering taxes from his own people in order to give them to the rulers of the Roman Empire. It was a hard time in Judea at that time. They were not in charge of themselves at all. They were enslaved on their own land. They were wards of the Roman Empire. Roman soldiers walked their streets and told them what to do and enforced Roman laws. Roman judges uh, made decisions and even challenged what they did religiously. 
it was a hard time for them. And there was a lot of resentment that was building up. They wanted their freedom back. They were looking for a Messiah that would lead them back to being a free people. Tax collectors were among the most hated because they were Jews who would take the money of the Jewish people and give it to the Roman government who enslaved them. They were not popular at all. They would sit in that booth taking your funds and giving them to the very ones that oppressed you. As they were walking through that crowded area with all those people following, when the four apostles, disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John would hear the words, follow me, they'd probably look to see who Jesus was talking to and be so surprised that he called the one in the tax booth. The crowd would have been so surprised that he called the one in the tax booth. The religious leaders who followed trying to catch Jesus doing wrong were surprised, maybe even pleased, thinking this will certainly end any credibility he has with the people when he called the man sitting in the tax booth. That man, Matthew, immediately stood up and left all of that behind and followed Jesus. He didn't leave behind fish and nets and boats. He left behind the money that came with being a tax collector with the special privileges he would have received. He left that behind and he began to follow Jesus. Now he is a student of Jesus. Now he is one learning from him so that later he can teach inside his place. We don't know for sure how Peter, Andrew, James, and John felt, but they probably weren't too excited to have the tax collector join their group. But Jesus saw something. Jesus saw in Matthew exactly what he needed to change the world. We need to always remember that sometimes the ones that do the greatest things in the kingdom were not the ones that we expected to do those things. They weren't the most educated. They weren't the greatest speakers. They weren't the greatest of those who lived among them. They were the most common of people and maybe even the ones that people re would reject. Those were the ones that Jesus called and those are the ones he sometimes calls still today. He can use us all. And he was calling Matthew. And Matthew made that decision, just like Peter, Andrew, James, and John did before. He made that decision to get up, leave everything behind, and follow after Jesus. Beginning in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 9, it says, And as Jesus reclined at a table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came reclining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, Jesus said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I've come not to call the righteous, but to call sinners. Jesus called Matthew and Matthew followed. Where was the first place he walked with, with the Messiah? He walked to his home, to the people that would gather at the tax collector's house, other tax collectors, sinners, or those who were hanging on around them in different ways for different reasons. Sinful people were at the tax collector's house, the refuse of their people, the ones everyone looked down on would gather at his house. Jesus walked in among them, sat at the table with them, began to eat and drink with them, which inside that culture was a sign of ultimate acceptance. I accept you. I appreciate you. I want to help you. And he sat down and began to talk and eat with them, with those who would gather at Matthew's house. I'm sure Peter, Andrew, James, and John were a little uncomfortable but I know that the people were amazed that Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, would do this. And also know that the religious leaders of that time were scandalized by what was happening. 
They couldn't believe that someone, a teacher like Jesus, someone so many people were following, someone so popular was making such an incredible mistake by sitting at a table with sinful people, especially tax collectors. They began to talk to the disciples about it, to Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They were asking, why is he doing this? Why would he eat with these people? Does he not know that they're sinful? Does he not know that they're not the type that we hang around? Jesus knew what they were saying. He heard what they were asking. The question was, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus hears it, he says, it's the sick that need help. It's those who are struggling that need help. It's those who are suffering that need help. They're the ones that need a doctor. And I came to heal them for the problems they face. I came to help those sin those who sin and I came to help those who need my help the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't think they needed help so they weren't the audience of Jesus sinful humanity was people who realized they were not what they should be wanted to change needed help Jesus said learn what this means he says I'm going to give you a lesson wise teachers of the law. I'm going to give you a lesson you need to understand. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Jesus came to show mercy to those who need him. It was more important than getting sacrifices from those who could offer them. He came with a special purpose in mind. He came not to call the righteous to change, but to call the sinner. I'm so grateful that this was the mission of Jesus because we are all sinners. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse number 23, that we have all sinned, we've all fallen short. We are all at Matthew's table inside this world when Jesus finds us. None of us are worthy to follow. None of us should be allowed to go and walk with him. And yet he sits down with us. And yet he calls us and he allows us to participate. We get to be disciples of Jesus, despite what we were before. If we will just leave what we have, change our life and follow him, we can be his disciples, his students, his followers. We can learn from him how to change the world. You know, really, that's what a congregation like ours is about. It's about taking people from this world who don't really feel like they have much value and introducing to them to the one that has the greatest of value, Jesus Christ, and allowing Jesus to become their teacher and working with them as we work to change this world for Christ. I was listening the other day to a commercial on the radio for a religious group in our area and it said come just as you are Jesus doesn't want to change you he wants to love you well I certainly believe that you can only come just as you are and I certainly believe Jesus loves you but I have no doubt in my mind that Jesus while he does want us to come as we are he does intend to change us into something important we learn we follow we do the things that he would have us do. And he wants us to change our world for Christ. Jesus didn't tell Matthew, just sit in the booth and do what you're doing. I love you anyway. He said, you come and follow me. You learn from the teachings I have. And it's going to change you. And then you can in turn change your world. Today in our world, we need to heed the call of Jesus. We may not be fishermen, we may not be tax collectors, but we still need to follow. We need to listen to the words of the rabbi, the great teacher. We need to do the things he does, say the things he says. We need to truly be followers of Jesus 
We need to change our lives more and more into being like Christ. And then more and more, we need to go out and encounter and interact with the world around us, sit at those tables, and change the life of those we are around. The whole goal of Christianity is simple. It's to be like Jesus. The only way you can do that is listen to him, walk with him, do the things he would do. And when we do that, we can become disciples. We're going to talk more in coming weeks about others who become disciples of Jesus. There were men and women who followed and learned and served and ministered on behalf of Jesus. There was a number of men who became his apostles and served in very special ways, very close to Christ. And we're going to talk about how they became like Jesus and how they changed the world for Christ. It's interesting that Jesus, God on earth, came and he needed the help of man, needed the help of people who would learn and listen and follow him in order to work out his plan in this world. Still true today. He needs us to learn from him, to talk his words, to do his works, to be his disciples and change the world. I hope that we will all embrace this challenge. I look forward to studying more about this in future weeks. I enjoy this time of Bible study together and I just thank God for you. I'd like to close with a word of prayer. Father, we pray that we will just be like Jesus, that we will learn at his feet. We will take every word that he speaks and apply them to our lives that we will do the things Jesus would do. Then we also pray that we will read and listen and come to understand the words of the apostles and Bible writers who Jesus walked with, talked with, and his disciples interacted with. Make up those books we call the New Testament. I pray that we'll study those things and be more the kind of follower you want us to be. Then I hope we'll be willing to sit at the table with those out in this world, those who don't know Jesus yet. And Father, I pray that we'll tell them the good news of Jesus, introduce them to Jesus, and I pray they will become disciples of Jesus as well. May you bless us as we try to follow Jesus in this world. It's the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.